Hola, hello everyone. I'm Dina Mawida. In this video that I made for my project in Portuguese culture class, I want to talk about how Luis de Camus portray Indonesia in his famous poetry, O Suciadas. The history of the arrival of the Portuguese to Indonesia needs to be studied when discussing the relations of the Europeans with the region. The Portuguese were the first Europeans to come to Asia to trade by sea. They first entered Indonesia by Sumatra in 1509, and then they returned in 1511 AD. Since the 15th century, the Portuguese have been exploring the seas and have a strong naval fleet. When King Manuel I learned that in Far East Asia there was a land rich in spices, he summoned Vasco da Gama, an experienced Portuguese explorer, to lead an expedition to the Indian Ocean. The main purpose of the Portuguese expedition was to bring spices, which were expensive goods in Europe. Westerners used spices as raw materials for medicine or pharmacy. Disinfections of wounds, narcotics, aphrodisiacs, perfume, and for food preservation and cooking. In 1512, the Portuguese arrived in Maluku and they were welcomed by the Sultan of Ternate. From Ternate, the Portuguese fleet succeeded in controlling the spice trade especially the one from Eastern Indonesia. 44 years later, in 1556, a poet named Luis de Camus came to Maluku to stay in exile. Unexpectedly, there he created a poem that was to become the most important work of Portuguese language literature, called Osuciadas, besides Telling the discovery of the South African Sea Route to India by Vasco da Gama and other voyages of the Portuguese during that period of time, this poem also tells us of the time when he visited and lived on the island of the Maluku Archipelago from 1556 to 1559. Commerce in Osuciades expresses his gratitude to this land. The description of Indonesia in poetry that we can see for the first time is in Kanto 10, stanza 124. Tijem Aurea, por epiteto ya ajuntaram, albums que fosse ofir imaginaram. In the first, Camus mentions the island of Sumatra and explains that this island is an island rich in natural resources, especially gold. Next is Canto 10, stanza 132. Oya capelos mares do orienti, as infinitas ilias espaiades. Fiti dore, eternate, como fervente, como, que lancha as flamas ondeadas, as arvores feras do crapa ardente, como sangue portugues inda compradas, aqui ha as aureas afis, que na odesem, nunca a teha, eso mortas aparecem. In this verse, Camus expresses his gratitude to the islands of Ternate and Tidore, which at the time were inhabited by many soldiers, traders, and religious people who came from Portugal. He also expressed his longing and nostalgia about the days he spent on the island of Ternate. The descriptions of Indonesia are found again in Canto 10, stanza 133. Oria Jibanda as Elias, Kese as Malta, Lagrimas, 
Kom ke dair ya ono mei celebrado. In that stanza, he also mentions the islands of Banda and Kalimantan, which he has visited. Carlos praised the beauty of the island of Banda and the wealth of the island of Borneo. It is very visible that he admires what is on these islands. Carlos also mentions camphor from Borneo in this stanza. Luis de Camus is a very brilliant Portuguese poet. He is very good at using the opportunity to describe the beauty of Indonesia, which is like a fairy tale country in his poetry. He poured the beauty of Indonesia, which at that time was still called Nusantara, into the poetry of Osusianas. Camus reveals his memories of living on the mythical Spice Island, where he reached the pinnacle of his creative work and later this work proved to be one of the most important works for Portuguese and world literature. Camus can be said to be the first poet to write poetry about islands in the archipelago or Indonesia and also one of the first Europeans to describe their flora species. Camus mentions the islands he has visited, such as and explains the beauty and wealth that these various islands have. Thank you so much for your interest and attention. Obrigada.